be your name. Blessed be your name, Jesus. Blessed be your name, Father. we thank you tonight for what you will do here in this place we thank you for your glory that rests upon this house Holy Spirit visit us may we never be the same in your presence thank you in Jesus name can we do something before we sit down? I want you to just be still wherever you are. Close your eyes and open your hands before you. There are a number of people that God wants to visit before we begin the meeting. While we were worshiping, I just saw a vision of angels walking all over this place. And the Lord said there are people whose impartation, whose visitation is now. Open your two hands, put them before you, eyes closed, no movement everywhere, inside and outside. And I'm going to ask the Lord to begin the visitation. Father, all across this hall, from the front to the back, outside and those following online, I ask that in the mighty name of Jesus, let the angels of glory that are present tonight visit your people put an impartation upon their lives put a blessing let grace come upon your children write this minute in the name of Jesus now just be still in the next 60 seconds I see the angels of the Lord moving in this place the Lord will touch a few people and then we'll sit down thank you father let it happen in the name of Jesus all across this place all across this place you feel something on your hand that's the impartation coming and it's resting on a few people categorically I'm seeing 7 to 14 people you will feel such a weight and heat on your hands. You will not be able to stand it. It is a mighty visitation. Father, release it at the count of seven all across this place. Let it happen to those seven and fourteen people. One. Help them. Two. Three. Four. Outside. I see three people outside. Five. Six. Let that weight of glory rest upon you. And now seven. Macros capanda la da braski pahande. Shila branda bregedeski pahanda kabar. We look to Yahweh. Yahweh. Our hope is Yahweh, 
Yahweh. The Lord is still touching people. We look to Yahweh. 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 <laughs> Yahweh. 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 I see the angel of the Lord anointing several people on their head. You are not much, just few of you. And I'm going to ask the Lord to do it at the count of three. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup run it over. You will feel it like hot liquid coming on your head. Father, let it happen. By the unction of your grace and your power in this place. Inside, overflow, online, at the count of three. Let that anointing rest. One. Two. Three. Touch them now. Touch them now. Alamando si amanda la baki amanda sadi adanamana Se mana mahanda na badale She ananado sanamandi Ye you will do tonight for what you are set to do and for what you are already doing we give you glory we fix our gaze and our eyes on you and you alone and today let there be miracles let there be signs wonders mighty move of your spirit I don't know why I see the hand of God coming on two people at the back and you will hear a shout. One on this side, one on the other side. At the back, I see the hand of God coming on two people. Just lift your hands, all of you at the back, close your eyes. It's not about a man, it's a visitation of a spirit. A spirit that is older than time. Father, I command that visitation right now. I stretch my right hand. By the power of your name, let your hand come upon those two people right now. You will hear a shout. As soon as you hear that shout, let me know. Right now, let it rest upon them. It's a new season. It's a new season. Macros kapanda la da prende keba. La ponde sabrunda bakabre nekida. Zavuko papine kosia. Subrenda baparea de lekiyama. Romeso babunda bakaya Labanto shabaka paya Ekapusko pondi Help that young man they have seen Mokoto zema Parosia bakaya Help him Laminosh kepa Rusko po Fodudi borondi bolaha Robobu siponye lehebala Romeo babo haliso Babuts kapa Abubeno sulebrombe su riababa ha. E anamanda la balada la namasa na namande. Jesus, thank you, Father. Blessed be your name. Please be seated. Few few minutes, and then we'll be standing shortly. God bless you for coming. Welcome you to July's Miracle Service. And I trust the spirit of grace for an outpouring today. More than just a miracle service, I sense the spirit of revival being released today. Thank you, Father. Saba la bila sobre shetu tomi kopobinos. I told you the spirit of revival is here. That's the spirit of prophecy. Tonight is more than just a miracle service. It's an outpouring. 
Mesoro Masuka Ba Le Shuriama. That fair lady at the back, close to the last window. Yes, you are looking at the back. Yes, you looking at the back. Just stand up. Look at me. Stretch your hands towards me. Your two hands. Father, I stretch my hands towards her. Grant her the desires of her heart. And let the grace of God envelop you right now from the crown of your head to the sole of your feet. In the name of Jesus. Horamasi parande le moroska babran sabadia lara mandoshka e broska e le mondo broski abahada e la manso dabai. That's it. Just help her. Akora masadia. Just help her. Ezekiel 37. Let's walk with the scripture tonight and then we'll pray. Permit me, my voice is down today, so sound people, make sure you help me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Uh, there's somebody who is following us online. You are holding a device right now. And I see like your hands are getting hot. There's a visitation of the glory of God coming on you. You are following online. And I see, your, I see you holding a device. And I see your hands hot. You feel like heat on your hands. It's a visitation of the glory of God. Whoever you are all across the world, make sure you report. Find a way to report to us on any of our platform. It's a visitation of God's glory on your life in this season. Cobra D said. Are we ready tonight? Ezekiel 37 from verse 1. The hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And set me down in the midst of the valley and it was full of bones. Then he caused me to pass by them all around. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And indeed, they were very dry. And he said to me, Son of man, can these bones live again? So I answered, O oh Lord God, you know, can these bones leave? Can that situation come to an end? Can there be an end to affliction in your family? Can there be an end to limitation? Even when you have tried all that you know to do, is there still a hope? The Bible says, surely there is an end. It put the word surely so that you can please maintain movement. It put the word surely so that you can be aware that it's not something God is planning to do. The Bible says, surely there is an end to everything. So God is asking you a question tonight before we begin to minister. Can these bones leave? I know that many of us came here with expectations, with burdens in our heart. And sometimes we get so overwhelmed with the challenge. We get so overwhelmed with the circumstance. And if you are not careful, you come to a point where you are swallowed up by the circumstance. And God becomes more little in your imagination than the very problem itself so he took ezekiel the bible says the hand of god was upon him you would think that because the hand of god was upon him he would take him to heaven or he would take him to a bed of roses 
or take him to a land flowing with milk and honey because there are Christians who believe that bad things should not happen to them because they are Christians let me tell you something the Bible says there was a man and his wife the Bible says they were righteous they were blameless God's account of them was that they were blameless this is God's description of them not a man God said they were righteous and they were blameless they were priests and they served God devotedly but the Bible says they had no child so don't think that because you are a Christian don't believe all those lies that if you are a Christian you are in Christ it should be an end to challenges no Christianity is not all about solving problems it's not my message but I wish I just feel to start here as a matter of fact I've said it before and I'll say it again and again that Christianity is the beginning of a battle the moment you decide for God you have you have become one with him in his kingdom that therefore means that there is going to be a contention over your life from the kingdom of darkness but Jesus said in this world we will have tribulation so sometimes we are we have been misled to believe that when challenges come it is not supposed to happen because we are Christians or because we are called by God so the hand of God was upon Ezekiel but the Bible says he was carried in the spirit of the Lord to where a valley that was full of what bones if you are with me outside say amen come on shout it better say amen God bless you the hand of God was upon Ezekiel they didn't carry him to Jerusalem they didn't carry him to the White House they didn't carry him to Central Bank you know some of you will wish that you just appear in the bunker of Central Bank and fetch all the cash that is here let me tell you something about money money is so deceptful you will not know until you've gotten small money that's why you know that money cannot solve problems because the more money you have the more problems you have and then you will think that you need more money to solve problems so somebody said more money more problems and if you continue like that the spirit of greed will infest your life that's why the bible didn't say you shall not serve god and satan satan was not an equal match to god the bible didn't say you shall not serve god and death death was not an equal match to god the bible didn't say you shall not serve god and who, which other spirit which other demon was fearful all the demons put together none of them was mentioned the bible didn't even say you shall not serve god and hell i hope you know hell is different from the lake of fire you don't know <laughs> uh, the bible says you shall not serve god and what mammon the hand of god was upon ezekiel and he was carried in the spirit of god to a valley that the anointing can be on your life that the grace of god can function around you but there can still be predicaments around your family there can still be troubles the storm can still rage around you that you go to sleep and god is giving you encounters in dreams you wake up and your life does not look like what you see in your dreams the hand of god was upon ezekiel but he carried him to a valley full of what dry bones <laughs> one of the greatest fight of a believer is the fight of faith Hmm? is the fight of faith and the fight of faith is more resisting the devil by binding the devil no the fight of faith is maintaining your confession in the midst of circumstances the bible says yea what shall we say in all this we are more than conquerors and many of you as i speak to you right now i know that you are going through your valley of dry bones it could be poverty it could be lack it could be a cycle of delay a cycle of failure some of you have gone hither and thither every kind of person have prayed and laid their hands on you and the problems seem to multiply you know it's more painful when you have attempted to solve a problem 
and it seems unsolvable it's more painful at that point because you begin to give in to despair and discouragement you begin to lose grip with the truth that god can still step in for you i came to encourage that person whoever you are that it is not yet over until god says it is over oh you didn't hear me i said it is not yet over until god says it is over now hear what the lord said i should tell you that for him it's not going to be over until he steps in but he needs you to maintain your confession that it is not yet over until you say it is over you didn't understand what i just said you didn't understand what i said you're not following me that's why i asked ezekiel son of man can these bones live <laughs> when God is asking a question, He's not looking for an answer. He's looking for cooperation. He's looking for the capacity of that individual to believe Him. The greatest passion of God has always been to be believed. <laughs> the greatest passion of God has always been to have people who believe in Him. The Bible says, that those who know their God shall be strong and do exploit. He says, Son of man, shall these bones live? He didn't say, Prophet of God, shall these bones live? There are battles in life you don't fight with your calling. I hope you know. There are fight battles in life you fight with your faith. No calling there. No apostle. No prophet there. It is you and God. Many of you don't know this thing about ministry. And <laughs> See, Ministry is an office. You don't live in an office. You understand? And if they sack you from that organization, that office does not remain vacant. Somebody else will fill the office and it will keep producing. So if you build your Christian life based on your calling, that's how you know that Judas was dead. But the 12 were still complete. There are battles in life. It's not about your calling. He didn't say prophet, shall these bones leave? He didn't say prayer warrior, shall these bones leave? You know, sometimes we are tempted to begin to trust in those things. A little anointing on your life, a little drop of oil on your life, and you begin to carve out a reputation, carve out a niche for yourself, and build your reputation in that that is what we call spiritual pride you are not building your faith in god you are building your reputation in what you have been able to carve out for yourself that's the reason why the prophet had to be taken to a valley full of dry bones and he was face to face with the bones and according to him he said they were very dry and god asked him a question son of man here you are in the midst of a valley of dry bones nobody to talk to nobody to run to many of you are in in that state in your life now it looks like there's nobody to talk to again it looks like there's nobody to run to what prayer have i not prayed before now but yet god asked the question shall these bones live again is there any faith inside of you do you still see any possibility and i like the answer of ezekiel very wise guy Honestly, if I was there, I didn't know what I would answer God. How do you answer that kind of question? God himself, the Alpha Omega, the Almighty God brought you to a valley full of... I thought God would just begin to... But God asked you. It's like God asking you, this sickness you came with this evening, can it live your life? This is the seventh month of the year. You have been waiting on the promise of God. Nothing has, nothing has changed for you. Can it still happen for you? That house you have been building for 10 years. Can it still be completed? You have been looking for a job for a long time. Praying on your CV. Some of the CVs you have even prayed in tongues till you soak them with sweat. And submitted them. The more you submit them, nothing happens. All the connections you have used, humanly speaking, nothing has happened. They only keep telling you, we'll get back to you. We'll get back to you. So God is asking, can these bones live again? Some of you are here, not necessarily 
impoverished or challenged as it were but it looks like you have been stuck in one place the children of israel stayed 430 years in egypt one night god brought them out into the wilderness but they wandered around that wilderness for 40 years and all of a sudden it looked like the route to canaan the promised land had been sealed a generation watched their fathers died and they were already growing old you remember what caleb told joshua i like the spirit of caleb caleb said i was 40 years when we entered here now i'm 80 it looks like i'm old he said but I'm, i still have the strength of that time give me this mountain god is asking you and i want you to ask yourself that question this is not about the man of god many times we think it's just about one man coming waving his hand and the heavens just open and bounties are falling i'm asking you can these bones live again miracle service back to back you attend you see people giving their testimonies but nothing seems to be changing in your life can these bones live again and i like the response of ezekiel he said oh god thou knowest you know there are some conditions <laughs> you have to just you your, your your song will be the song i just sang we look to yahweh yahweh our hope is yahweh Yahweh, we look to Yahweh, Yahweh, forever Yahweh, Yahweh. Ezekiel said, oh God, now you know. For 30 years, poverty has caged my family. Can these bones live again? God, at this point, I don't have the answer, only you. I've been looking for a job for five years. I've done everything. Traveled to this state, traveled to that place, came back, nothing has happened. Those that were supposed to remember me refused to remember me. Oh God. <laughs> have you ever been there before? I've been there several times so everything you try in the natural nothing works you've prayed you have fasted sown seed the, I taught us before I think it was last year I said every time you think you have done all that you know to do in the flesh and nothing is working what should you do do nothing stand there because I wonder where Moses got that revelation from when they were standing in front of the Red Sea and he was he was standing in front of two million people mountains beside them chariots of the egyptians coming behind them and a red sea that was not even that was only looking for people to dare it and enter and it to swallow them and moses told them stand still and see i hope you know it was never written before him now at least you can look at your bible in the days when you don't have faith you can look at your bible and see a scripture the question i ask is those men of old what did they look at during their time because i hope you know moses wrote genesis so where did he see that revelation stand still and see creator of the universe what can you do what can you do jesus you are the name above every other name what can't you change what can't you change jesus you are able come on sing you are able
the truth is when you say stand still actually what you are saying to that individual sit down sit down a few minutes when when the only protocol is to stand still what we are actually saying is assume the position of god because god is the only unmovable god he remains unmovable in every circumstance the bible says it's the same yesterday today and forever there has been never be there have never been a situation that moved god for once so when moses said stand still what he was saying is as human beings there's nothing we can do so let's switch dimensions let's move into the dimension and the realm of god and see what he's doing and do what he's doing because i told you that faith is seeing the invisible feeling the intangible and doing the impossible right yeah that you hear the inaudible you feel the intangible you see the invisible so that you can do the impossible that's faith so when moses says stand still he said just behave like god you know that that game they used to play those days change your style be like that then they trap you like that the person will come kick you do all manner of things and you must remain there you remember that game some of you are laughing it's like they caught you many times what is it stand still but how do they go i don't know those of you from lagos you know what i'm talking about stand still can these bones live again he say oh god you know that's what i want us to tell god this night look at that situation you came with look at that problem you came with. some of you came not with a problem but you came standing in for families represented standing in for a loved one some of you are standing here and you are like a priest representing your family if god gives you a breakthrough this night a breakthrough has come to your family some of you are here because god wants to roll away an ancestral yoke that has been on the family where you come from can these bones live they say oh god you know can hiv positive be turned to hiv negative god you know can sickle cell be changed to aa god you know is it possible that lord i'm sitting here five years jobless and by this time tomorrow opportunities are looking for me oh god thou knowest i came here desperate dry spiritually i need a fountain of god to flow into my life can it happen god When you get to that point like ezekiel you have opened the doorway for god to step in and move in the miraculous you see let me tell you one thing about the miraculous in as much as god performs miracles through men you must understand that men are just the channels god is the doer of miracles but if you say god does miracles with a heightened understanding of god that may still look like an insult because God himself is a miracle. But you can't explain him. He's a mystery. Isn't it? That's it. So rather than we say God does miracles, we should say that miracles or miracle is his nature. That's who he is. That's why we sang that song. He's the way maker. He's the miracle worker. Not like he does it. No, we are the ones that walk the miracle. The Bible says walk out. We are the ones who do the walking. But the nature of the miraculous is in God. Just like it is in Satan's nature to perform wickedness. Satan does not need to touch anybody. If he passes through this hall, except for the presence of the Holy Spirit, somebody will fall sick. That's how his nature is. He has an atmosphere of evil around him. Just allow him to pass this hall. But the Bible says the Lord is that spirit and where the spirit of the Lord is there is what? Lipa. It's his presence. Just like the presence of Satan communicates fear, evil, catastrophe. The presence of God brings liberty. Most times you think God will have to come and follow you to fight that 30 year old problem. No. All he needs to do is just to walk into this place. 
and that's the liberation of a family all he has to do is to pass by you the bible says that they lay the sick on the street just so that the shadow of peter hold on do you think that it really was his shadow physical shadow huh you think it was his physical shadow it was not his physical shadow that was not what they were looking for because your physical shadow its length is determined by the light that is cast upon you that means when the sun begins to go down the shadow of peter begins to dwindle so when the bible says that they kept the sick so that the shadow of peter will cast on them see beyond just a physical shadow falling the bible says we are talking about a spiritual covering because he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the word shadow the word shadow there was covering it was not just shadow <laughs> All he has to do is to just pass by you. His presence brings healing. He doesn't have to do the healing, no. If God comes to you, he comes because he wants intimacy with you. But you need a healing, you need a miracle. All he needs to do is to walk by your house. The Bible says Jesus was passing by Jericho. And a blind man began to cry. He had heard of all that Jesus had done. And when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth that was passing by, passing by, not a crusade, he was just strolling by the city. The Bible says he began to cry out, Son of David, have mercy. Son of David, have mercy. Son of David. And you know the end of the story. All that God needs to do today is just to walk past your situation. All that God wants you to do is to put that your situation and God together on a scale. Let me see if your situation will still remain there. The Bible says that there is a fire that burns in his presence. There is no affliction that fire cannot burn. There is no problem that fire cannot consume. If that fire can purify, if that fire can anoint, then it can destroy the shackles of the enemy on your life. It doesn't take God a second to do a miracle, no. The Bible says in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, it is to you that a miracle is a work, but to God, all things. <laughs> That's why when the earth was without form and was void, God did not complain. Like some of us, if it, if it was the story written about us, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the beginning, Bishop created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form and was void. Let's say it was your story. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of Bishop was moving over the waters. Verse 3. And Bishop came and started complaining. This devil, why did you destroy what I have? That's what you do. Yes or no? Yes, that's what you do. The first thing we do when there is a challenge is we begin to complain. God didn't complain. The Bible says he just sat down. Probably he was eating apple, crossed his leg, and said, Okay, let there be this. Next day, let there be this. Let there be this. And that was all. It was only when it was time to create you that the Bible says God formed man. You know why? Because he was he was he was he was producing a substitute. And the Bible says that he has made us kings and priests that we may rule and reign where? On the earth. Let's read on and then we'll begin to pray. Verse 4. Again he said to me. Okay, he said, verse 3. And he said to me, son of man, can these bones live? So I answered, O Lord God, you know. And again he said unto me, prophesy to these bones. Prophesy to this sickness. Prophesy to this joblessness. Prophesy to this lack. Prophesy to this impoverishment. Prophesy to this spiritual dryness. Prophesy to this limitation. Prophesy to this stronghold. Prophesy to this yoke. Prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Sometimes you need to call the situation the way they are. He said, Thus says the word of thus says the Lord God to these bones. Surely I will cause bread to enter into you, and you shall live. I will put sinews on you 
and bring flesh upon you cover you with skin and put breath in you and you shall live and then you shall know that i am the lord so i prophesied as i was commanded and as i prophesied what happened what happened hold on the same thing he said god just finished saying it in verse 4 in verse 5 rather everything ezekiel said god just said it in verse 5 say to these bones you dry bones hear you the word of the lord i will cause you to come together i will put sin you upon you god just finished saying it nothing happened but the moment the prophet began to say the bible says suddenly there was what a noise why because the word of the Lord in God's mouth cannot accomplish anything on earth. It is the word of the Lord spoken by a man. The heavens of the heavens has he give, has, the, is the Lord. But the earth has he given to sons of men. There is a law of territory that before a spirit can find expression in this territory, it must be legalized, legitimized by a body. A human being must cooperate with that spirit and give his life as an expression. That's what witchcraft do. So the word of God in God's mouth didn't do anything. But the moment the man began to say it, he gave God permission. He gave God license. Every time, that's why the Bible says, let the weak say, I am strong. Not really because you should tell a lie to get your healing. No. But because God is ever ready to do anything. But the Bible says it happens by a protocol. It says God is able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all, you can ask or think. But... It is according to the power that is at work where inside so the restriction is that you are the vessel through which that power will be communicated but if you don't open your mouth nothing happens because when we open our mouth that's i told you that faith is vocal the bible says the righteousness of faith speaks some of you tonight one of the things that you have to do is to for once learn how to look at your problem and address them the way they are and speak the word of the lord to them say prophesy to these bones tonight god only sent me here to prophesy to someone's destiny i tell you i tell you I came by the hand of the Lord just to speak a word of breath on somebody's life that will command a change like day and night such as you have never seen before. I can see that your amen doesn't agree with what is about to happen. The Bible says prophesy. He said, and as I prophesied, there was a noise. Psalm 33 verse 6. He said, by the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. When God created man, what did he do? When God formed man in chapter 2 of Genesis, the Bible says, he breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. One translation said, man came to be. Do you realize that every commandment that God gave is a be commandment, not a do commandment? God did not say do strong. He said be strong. God did not say do holy. He said be holy. Man came to be. How did it happen? By the breath. That's the reason why when we begin to speak over situations. The same way the creative power of God was released into man. Is the same way it is released over that situation. And watch that situation shrink like a bacteria that meets its its waterloo i've seen god change lives i've seen god reposition destinies i've seen god do things that even me the prophet became surprised i'm telling you some of you think we are not surprised when god does the miracle the only difference between me and you is both face sometimes let me just tell you <laughs> i was in the church last sunday let me just give you a few stories and then we'll pray amen how many of you are ready to see the power of God this night? I was preaching somewhere last Sunday, last weekend, all through the weekend. 
and God told me the last day was going to be a healing service. I said, all right, let's go. At least if you heal headache, I'm okay with that. Backache, no problem. Waist pain, you know all those kind of small, 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 small cases that you can just go with them. So while I was ministering, God told me to pray for those who had leg pains. And then they started coming out. And they were women. Women who, not small children that would lie, women. And so while I was trying to put myself together to begin to minister to them, all of a sudden I saw them bringing in an 80-year-old woman, a grandmother. 80 years. I said 80, not 80 days. 80 years. They brought her and sat her in front with her walking stick. I said, God, we are in trouble today. <laughs> I said, God, how am I, how am I going to handle this? That was all that was happening inside of me. Meanwhile, I was outside laying hands on them saying God is going to heal you tonight but that, oh, that one was both face amen because sometimes you have to fate it till it happens you hear me many of you don't see miracles in your life because you, you, you can't dare God you don't know how to jump out in faith so I started praying for the others and God was healing them you know to build my faith for that one so God was healing them God was healing them so when I came to the woman this was an 80 year old I don't even know whether she's here I don't know or maybe her daughter is here I don't know 80 year old grandmother she doesn't speak English pure Hausa so there's no Kululu no Kalala you understand that thing uh -huh. so I went there and I began to minister to her and, and you know aside from the fact that she couldn't walk without an aid she wasn't seen properly she was like half blind and I laid my hands. And what I'm preaching to you tonight is what came to my ears. Son of man, can these bones live? And that's when I learned that for once, for a brief moment, if you can take your eyes off that situation and focus it on Jesus, even if it happens for five seconds, that's when the miracle happens. Look and leave, my brother, leave. Look to Jesus, not a man. Now and leave. This recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look. Even if it's just three seconds, you take your eyes off that pain and focus it. That three seconds is enough for there to be a restructuring I laid my hands on that woman took my eyes off her case focused it on God prayed a very simple prayer most times the most simple prayer does the greatest miracles you don't know you think it's all the shout the greatest miracles I've seen God do through me were the most casual prayers I pray so if I'm praying casually for you thank your God I'm not saying that if, I, if you don't see me praying casually nothing will happen Eh? some of you want laying on of hands some of you even after the miracle service you still want to see the man of God <laughs> catch your own now learn out learn the greatest contact for the miraculous is your faith your faith when it meets the word of God it's not by the laying on of hands alone it's not really by any physical contact the greatest contact for the miraculous to happen is your faith meeting with the word of God It is recorded in his word. Hallelujah. It is only that you look. You know what? God is already healing people now. Now. I've not even started ministering. God is already healing. I see, I see a lot of things already in the spirit. God has already started healing. Some of you, before you stand up, the affliction you came with is gone. I'm telling you. I finished praying for that woman. And I took her by the hand. Her daughter, by the way, who brought her was also sick. She said she had a boil, huge boil on her thigh. So I told her, hit your leg on the ground three times. She did. I said, go and check. The boil is not there. So while the daughter was coming back with her miracle that the boil had disappeared, she saw me walking with her mother without the stick. 80 years. 80 years. You know, I like that kind of miracle. <laughs> While she was coming towards us to confirm a miracle that she was already shocked about, 
How can you just tell somebody hit your leg on the ground three times and a boil, dis a boil disappears? I'm not talking about a young lady, a woman. You, this ones you can't lie to. And while she was coming directly facing me, I was walking with her mother without the stick. And the mother spoke in house and said she can see me clearly and she knows she's healed. Now listen. Well, all that Ezekiel did is what we are going to do tonight. He said, I prophesy. For once, Ezekiel forgot about the bones. And he stood and spoke over those situations. Let me tell you what will change your life. It's not the amount of oil that comes on you. It's not the handkerchief you receive. Even if I remove my shirt, tear it and share it for everybody. It really will not do anything. It is the word of God that is sent to you. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them. You don't need to tell the word of God what to do. When it comes into your life, the first thing it does is to x-ray and to ex 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 excavate everything that doesn't look like God affliction does it look like god no poverty does it look like god no impoverishment does it look like god no joblessness does it look like god no stagnation does it look like god no lack does it look like lord no affliction does it look like god no delay does it look like god no hallelujah it is only Now let me read one more verse and then we'll, we'll pray. Oh God, I feel the anointing so strong. Can you just pray as, you see, as you're seated? Just pray in the spirit for one minute. There's a cloud of glory that is moving all across. I tell you, I tell you, there is a weight of the presence and the power of God in this place. Ombra Kabraski Abad Lush Kabrandas Kabrades It is only Hallelujah If you know that you are using glasses here, not for guy, but you have an eye condition, run to the front very quickly, whether at the overflow or at the hall. You use glasses. But there's somebody God is healing right now on your left eye. You, you are feeling something on your left eye right now. God is healing you. If you are that one person, rush to the front. Take the testimonies quickly for me. But if you use I if you use glasses, I said if you use glasses, if possible, come with the glass. I'm seeing a lot of people without their glasses, so I don't know if please make sure you don't come out randomly. If you have the glass, it's good to come out with it. Please don't come out randomly. If you know you have eye problem and you use glasses, long-sightedness, short-sightedness, astigmatism, what, what are the glaucoma, whatever. Even if you are blind, just come like that. Cobra kaskiva, sambredi kuskila bahan, jebronte likeprinis. Stand there, just stand there, just stand there. Look at me, from there. Look straight to my eye. Look at me. No, don't smile. <laughs> look at me from there. Just look at my eyes straight. Look at my eyes. Look at my eyes, my dear. Look at me. Can you just keep your eyes on my eyes? Something is coming into you now. In the name of Jesus. Help her. Sir, come. Please stand. How long have you been using these glasses? Huh? More than a decade. More than a decade. More than 10 years. Okay, so I like this kind of miracle. At least nobody will say you. What's the problem? Glaucoma. Glaucoma. Yeah. Okay, so if you remove the glasses, 
what will happen I have a blur vision. you have a blur vision yeah. um what you are saying now is that just bring the strings down a little now you check her check whatever condition she came with she's healed check her that means if we remove your glasses you can't see what is written there it's blur Wait, remove it first let's see can you see I, I see the way he's training his eyes okay wear it back how long have you had these glasses more than 10 years so it has been like a best friend to your face exactly but sir jesus is about to touch you Amen. god loves you so much he wants your eyes back Amen. you believe god with me glaucoma And has exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. That at the name Jesus, every knee shall bow. My dear, come. Just hold my hand. Father, she's free in the name of Jesus. When they get up, just check them. Today, I don't have time to do all the ministry. But sir, God is going to heal you. And when God heals you, I'll pray for all of them. And instantly all of them will see instantly okay i'm not going to minister to you one by one i'm just going to pray for you the moment god heals him your healing has started i'll just pray for all of you at once and you will all see how many are they oh there's such a glory in this place how many how many huh 16 of them all right how many of you are ready to see the power of god at work Now stretch your hands towards them. Let's do it together. Now those of you in front, don't just put your hands down. And I want you, as your hands are stretched towards them, tell the Lord to heal them now. Okay, let my soul grant this here. Pass me not, O oh gentle Savior. Lord, Lord Jesus, tonight, heal your people. Sing it softly, Savior, Savior, hear my humble cries. is in this place I see I see the ministry of so many angels here there's an angel standing with me here now and so I know God is about to heal people yes Papa said this is Miriam All for right. the past three years three years she has an eating eye and every time it gets swollen all right but right now she has just confirmed that the eyes is no more eating her and she believes that God has healed her completely <laughs> Do not pass. How many of you believe God is going to visit you, 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 today? Not tomorrow. He's going to visit you today. How many of you, those of you in front, how many of you believe there is something for you today? All right. Sir, please step forward. I want you to just hold my hand. You are going to say, Jesus, no, with just one hand. Just one hand. Something happened. 
And now I know He touched me Sir, I want you to just say Jesus three times when I ask you to. You whisper the two, and then the third one you shout it. Okay? And you'll be healed right now. Father, thank you for taking glaucoma away. Heal your son right now. By the power in the name of your son Jesus. Now say Jesus. Jesus. That's it. Heal. Take the glasses off. Put something on the screen. A scripture or something. Just put something there. Let him look at it quickly. No, just close your eyes first. There's an evil song that's coming in my spirit. I'm trying to pick it now. <laughs> Just keep playing that line. Yeah. I'll get I'll get it. that song Vina. get the mic sing that song for me sir look at the screen now open your eyes read what's there Shh. read what's there read so I prophesy as I was read it again sir read it again so I prophesied as I was commanded and as I prophesied come on give God the praise give God the praise give God the praise let me have the glasses how do you feel on your eyes now you feel it better now you couldn't read like that you couldn't read like that initially when I remove it it was blur you just see it blur like white but you can't see the font They call him Jehovah Overdue. Come on, give him that praise out of your belly. No! Sir, I don't know how many appointments you have kept with the doctor. I don't know how much you have spent to buy glasses. But I want to let you know the eye clinics are not seeing you again. God bless you. And as God has healed you, God is giving a shift in your destiny. Your life is about to change from glory to glory. In Jesus' name. Go to your seat. Celebrate God. Now those of you in front, put your hand on your eye. Sir? Yes, Dr. Dr. Raku, sir. Yes, go ahead. This is faith, sir. Praise, sorry. Praise Yusuf. Praise Yusuf. Okay. She has had an eye issue for 15 years. Since she was in just 2. She uses her glasses, but the glasses is not here. When she came in, she doesn't see clearly. She sees blow. She doesn't see clearly. Yes. But right now, while the prayer went on, I was even thinking I would tell her to read this. She said, no, she let her read the one far there. She started reading. She started reading as far as the writing there. So as I, far as, as your far eyes can as see. Here, she started reading. <laughs> and not just that, sir. The left eye used to scratch her. Okay. But right now she's feeling so she was the okay. one with the left eye problem. Yes, sir. Was she the one I held the yes, hand? Yes, sir. Just for? now. Yes, sir. Come on, come. Did you say 15 years? 15 years since in just two, sir. Your praise does not qualify you for a miracle. You know your praise, God. Yes. 15. No. 15 years. 15 years. How do you feel? How do you feel? I feel happy because I 
I was supposed to go to Kano for eye surgery, sir. You were supposed to go to Kano? Yes, sir. For eye surgery? Yes, sir. And God has healed you. Yes, sir. Father, let it be perfected right now. In Jesus' name. Help her. Put your hands on your eyes, everybody. Shh. Shh. Put your hands on your eye. It's holy now. No, no when to jump and no when to be down. Father, in the name of Jesus, I take authority over every blinding spirit. Every demon that has fought the sight of this one standing in front of me. Sixteen of them. And in the name of Jesus, you foul spirits, let loose of them now. Let loose of them now. Make sure you are around them to help them. Let loose of them now. In the name of Jesus. I declare healing to whatever condition. And I command you to see. In Jesus name. Now with your hands on your eyes. I want you to repeat after me. As loud as you can. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. That I am healed. And now, I can see. I can see. Remove your hands, test yourself, and let me know the miracle. Very quick. Can we be upstanding? It's time. Let me just start by ministering to the sick. Check them one by one. Check them one by one. Every one of them. Check them. Let's confirm their healing very quick. I think somebody... Yeah, pastors, please just... Let's have you check every one of them and make sure they are healed. If you are sick, you came in here sick or you are standing for a loved one that is sick. This is what I want you to do. I'm about to pray right now. If the person you are standing for, you can reach the person on phone. I want you to take your phone and call them now and leave it on. I'll pray. Just call them and tell them there is one crazy young boy who believes God can heal. Okay? It's not a waste of your credit. Don't worry. And tell them to believe God. I'm going to pray right now and they'll be healed. But if you are here, you are sick, place your hand on any part of the body where the sickness is. Or just in case your own sickness, you don't understand it, put your right hand on your head. Or if it's in a delicate part of your body, put your right hand on your chest. I'm going to pray right now. Please make sure you follow these instructions. I'm about to pray. There's such a strong healing anointing in this place right now. Oh God, thank you. You are the Lord that He led me. You are the Lord. Those of you at the overflow, make sure you are following the instructions. Those of you online, connect right now. God is about to heal. And the young man at the back behind that female usher. Yes, you, sir. You are looking at me directly. Yes, you. Nod your head so that I know you are the one, sir. The young man at the back. Ilya is in front of you. Yes. Will you be embarrassed, sir? I'm going to ask you to do something prophetic. God is about to visit you. Huh? I want you to shout Jesus as loud as you can. Restoration is coming to your life and your family. Shout it. That's it. Lord, visit that family, that man. Restore everything that was lost. And let the doors be opened again. In the name of Jesus. Have you called them? Are you sure the phones are on? Father, thank you tonight. You love to heal. Healing is your nature. And I ask that from the front to the back in this hall, those overflow, those online, those on phone, release the healing stream that flows from Calvary 
Let every sickness melt under your power. Let there be healings across the airwaves and in this place. I rebuke every infirmity, every condition of the blood. I command you to be healed right now. Every condition of your ear, I command healing right now. Every respiratory condition, I command healing right now. Come on, say a better amen. amen. Every stomach condition or condition with your digestive system, I command by the healing power of God, let it be cleansed and healed right now. In the name of Jesus, amen. I come against pain of any sort. Pain of any sort. In the name of Jesus, depart from their bodies now. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I rebuke the spirit of paralysis. I rebuke stroke. I rebuke high blood pressure. I rebuke hypertension. I rebuke every condition. Terminal diseases. Go in the name of Jesus. Father, let your healing flow like the balm in Gilead. In Jesus' precious name. I want you to shout that amen three times. Amen. Number two. Amen. Number three. Amen. Now wave your hands and give him praise. This is what you do. If you were here standing for yourself, check yourself right now. Listen, check yourself. What did I say? Check yourself. Whether you are the overflow, you are in the hall, check yourself. If God has healed you, don't be embarrassed. Come out. Let's take your testimony and perfect it and shame the devil. Now, if you called somebody on the phone, you can excuse us, go outside, call them and find out if the condition is still there or if they are healed. Come back and report to any of the pastors here. And if you are following online, I want you to reach us through any of our social media handles. Maybe you are, you are following by, you know, way of Facebook or by way of WhatsApp or by way of Mixellar. I want you to just let us know what God has done in Jesus' name. Let's just worship God for a few minutes while we, we get the testimonies ready. You are the Lord, my healer. Come on, say it. You are the Lord. You are the Lord. That he led me. That he led me.
adoration. As you worship the King of Kings, He is arising in your life. If God has healed you, I want you to rush to the front. Let's get your testimony. If you called the people and they confirmed to you they are healed, come with your phone. Let's also get the testimony. And then those online, I don't know how they will do it. Uh, media people, make sure there's a way by which they can reach you. And if we get the praise report, please send it overboard so that we can read it out. And let's just see the goodness of God today. Amen. Can you be seated briefly? Just sit down. Let's take a few testimonies. Yes, sir. Sir, this is um, Sister Janet. Amen. Prated by the side of her ribs. Now, you know what God just told me? Every miracle you celebrate, you open the door for an angel to visit your house. You hear me? So when you hear a condition, you celebrate it, an angel is being sent to your house. Amen. I'm like, that's, I just told you what God said. I don't know whether your house as in your house address or your family where you come from. In Jesus' name. Amen. All right, sir. This is Sister Janet. Yes. Yeah. She, she was operated by her side All right. since 2017. Okay. The operation is about uh, black blood. Okay, bad blood. Black. Black blood. Yes, black blood. That's bad that blood. It, yes, so if they don't operate it, that she was going to die. Okay. But um, and every time she vomits, she vomits, she vomits pores. Even after the operation. After the operation, she okay. vomits pores. Pores. Yes. Okay. But right now, the pain she's feeling by the side is gone, and she's feeling very okay. Since 2017. Since 2017. Father. We perfect it. We perfect it. Amen. We perfect it. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. It is over, my dear. It's done. God bless you. Papa, sir, this is Joshua Haruna. All right. He Brother was taking Joshua. his dad to his to a hospital yesterday. All right. So when coming back, he started vomiting. He had stomach pain. He couldn't even stay in the church this morning yes. because of the pains in his stomach. Yeah. But the moment you started praying for the sick, he got his healing instantly. No more stomach pain. He's free. Amen. You are healed, perfected in Jesus' name. Amen. Yes, next. So this is Sister Blessing. She had an accident since, since she was in jail too. Since she was in jail too. That's yes, how many years, madam? 12 years. 12 years. 12 years okay so she couldn't walk well with the leg but so when you, the prayer went on right now she testified that the legs are okay she's fine so you are like <laughs> hold on you are like the woman with the issue of blood 12 years <laughs> and god has healed you you said what what how was you know was it the two legs or just one leg one leg, sir. One leg your right leg yes, you couldn't sir. walk properly yes, now walk let's see Walk to the end of that place. There goes the power of God. Give him praise. Amen. Come. Come. Let me perfect it. In the name of Jesus, it goes and never returns again. Amen. My dear, the hand of God is upon you and God is going to use you mightily. In the name of Jesus, receive a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit. Your life will never remain the same.
you have to know when I'm ministering. That's all. That's I wanted. I needed to do that. Thank you. Yes. Next. Yes, sir. This is mommy Mary. Yes. She had an eye condition for four years. If you look at the eye, sir, it has been booked for an operation. Wow. Which eye? The right the eye. Right eye. Wow. Can't read from far. Yes. Well, right now I asked her to read the vision, and she did that at ease. Put a scripture on the screen. Let's test her again. Let her read it for us. Anything, any scripture, anywhere. Just put something there quickly. Let's test it. For how long have you had this condition, madam? Four, Four years. years. Four yes. years. Yes, sir. And the operation was supposed to be when? No, I was booked. Okay, you but were I booked. I refused to go. Okay, when were you booked for the operation? Uh, around March. March. You yes. refused to go. You were trusting God. Yes, sir. And God has healed you now. Okay, read what's on the screen for us. Let's see. Close the left eye. Let I use the right eye. Uh huh. Okay, read, ma madam. And he said to me, Son of man. Come on, give God the praise. Yeah. Hey, hey. Four years. Father. Perfected in the name of Jesus. Amen. Never to return. Healed. God said I should lay my hands on that eye because it looked like something like a growth that was supposed to grow there or that was growing there. But in the name of Jesus, it goes and never returns in Jesus' name. And amen. God bless you. Celebrate God. <laughs> so this is for me again. She has had an eye problem for over 20 years. Over 20 Since she years. was in form 2. Wow. From Form 3. Form Some three. of you don't know what form two, form three. <laughs> what do you know? Basic, basic two, basic three, basic. <laughs> okay, she yeah. could only read things from a close distance. She but couldn't see from a far. distance. So yes, she had short sightedness, right? Yes. Okay. So yes. right now she could see from afar. She can see. Yes, sir. Okay. Tell her to. Move to where the speaker is. Move to where. Let me come. Take her to where the speaker is. Because some people think we are playing games. Think that we gathered all these adults and told them behind the scene that they should come here and just play games. Right? Okay. Now, mommy, please read what is on the screen for us. And he said to me, Son of man, I dare you to give God praise. 20 years. 20 years. That's how you celebrate God. Hallelujah. That lady, yes. Black scarf. Black scarf behind the camera. Please come. Uh, okay, that's not a black scarf. I think that's a black scarf or something. Run quickly, quickly. Come, God wants to visit you. Mommy, come, let me pray for you. Father, we perfect it in the name of Jesus. And we declare that affliction departs from your life now and forever. God renews your youth as the eagles in Jesus' name. Stand here. Have I met you before? Do I know you? It's your first time seeing me one on one. Okay, but you don't know. I don't know you, right? Okay. Well, God has asked me to tell you to lift your hands because God is about to grant the desires of your heart now. Now, in ten seconds, in your heart, ask Him for just one thing: your desire. God doesn't do this always. You wish you are the one. Amen. That's okay, my dear. Father, I, lay, I touch her with my hands and I declare that desire is granted. In Jesus' name. Amen. Next, quickly, please. Quickly, quickly. Yes. Okay, sir. Yes. Yes. Sir, this is blessing. Yes, sir. She some years back she had blessing. an accident. Yeah. Fire accident. And that affected her eyes. She couldn't see. Yeah. She has been using glasses ever since then. But after the prayers, now she received her healing and now she could read from her. Hallelujah. Amen. Blessing. Not only is God healing you. But there's a spirit that follows you around that will live your life now. You will never be afraid again. You will never be depressed. Amen. Stretch your hands towards me. 
close your eyes every devil that has followed this life in the name of Jesus I command you to let her go amen let her go let her go I rebuke the spirit of fear I rebuke the spirit of depression and I command that the yoke of darkness is broken from her life in Jesus name it's over huh come it's over it's over depression fear so many things around your life and most times you're always to yourself to yourself but God sets you free is that true God sets you free God sets you free in the name of Jesus yes next testimony hallelujah Amen. sir we have a brother here bro Austin he was allergic to light he can't yes. stay for a very long time reading so Yes. He will be uncomfortable whenever he's reading without glasses. All right. But to God be the glory, after the prayer, God healed him instantly. Now he can look at lights. Well, there are a lot of lights here. Try looking at one. Well, before, if you look, if you, if you come, you know, naked with your eyes to light, what happens? I have to dim my light. Like you I have to dim. dim okay, look at this bulb. I think this is bright enough. And he's looking at it with his eyes open. Give God praise. Father, it is done. What's your name, sir? Austin, are you a man of God? You love God? God wants to use it. There's a calling on your life. But which, there's an anointing that will come upon you. That will activate it. You believe that? Such as I have, I will give you. Hold my hand. Father, I stand as an apostle and I command this destiny to be reviewed I declare that from today function in your calling a new anointing comes upon your life may you be a vessel I see fire coming on him I'm telling you a vessel that God will use for his glory fire in your bones and let that fire spread everywhere you go in the name of Jesus doesn't mean he will go and open church you understand you just god can use okay like steven in jesus day just make sure you help him when he gets himself you can go but there's a lot of fire on his life i don't know when he will recover yes yes sir yes uh, mommy hajara is her name for the past 17 years she suffered eye problems she can't do without glasses to god be the glory after the prayer god healed her instantly 17 years now mommy come God said I should lay my hands on you and prophesy one thing. I, I will not do that. This is a mother, you know. But God said I should lay my hands and prophesy that you are coming into a season of rest. On every side. Satan notwithstanding. The demons of your father and mother's house notwithstanding. And let it flow from you to your children, to your children's children. Amen. In Jesus' name. How long was the condition? 17. 17 years. I can see the glasses on her. And she can read now. You tested her? Yes, sir. Okay. Mommy, it is over. God says rest. In Jesus' name. Yes, sir. All right. This is Mommy Miracle. Mommy Grace Miracle. All right. Since 2005, she has been suffering from short-sightedness. Ooh. In fact, when she stepped in, one of her eyes was dropping tears. Mm. But ever since the prayer, sir, she received her healings. Wow. <laughs> Mommy, come. God is asking me to release the healing anointing into your life. You will become a vessel of healing. Amen. From today, carry that grace in the name of Jesus. It's over. God bless you, mommy. It's perfected. God bless you. Yes, next. Yes, Let's sir. take two more and we are done. Sir, this is Sister Rachel. Yeah. Raquel, she has been suffering from short sightedness likewise. Mm. But ever since you prayed, she just received her healings. Short sightedness. For yes, how sir. long, my dear? Come now, I know you. How long? From since when I was young. Very since small. when you were young. I know you've been using this one glasses you use, very huge bottle like that. But you can see now. Yes. Are you sure you can read what's on the screen? Yes. Try reading it. Let's see. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was commanded. 
Now, uh, what, what are you going to do with the glasses when you go back? It broke. I was planning on getting a new one. A new one. I think you should sow the money. Bring the money and sow seed. Amen. Amen. It's perfected in the name of Jesus. And let's this man tell me something. The hand of God is on your life. You are more than what the eye sees. God is about to use you. This season of your life, God is secluding you. There's a seclusion going on in your life. God is calling you to the secret. And God is going to use you to do great and mighty things like you have never dreamed of. In Jesus' name. Celebrate God for that. Yes. Amen. Apostle, this is Mrs. Mary Donald. For six years, she has been having eyes. What's her name? Mrs. Mary Donald. Mary Roland. Okay. Roland. Donald. Huh? Donald. Ronald. Oh, whatever. Roland, Roland, Ronaldo, anyone. Apostle, for six yeah. years, she has been having eye problem and then she cannot read small font okay but and now I, she could read yeah i tested i took a book and i gave her she and she read it. it yes sir come mama this was the glasses this was the glasses right so that you will not say it's fake oh. see the glasses inside but god has healed you now now do you believe as god has healed you god is about to change your life God is about to make you smile and put so much joy in your heart. And in the name of Jesus, let it be a season of joy. In Jesus' name. Testimonies are everywhere. Hey! I see it. I feel it. Testimonies You know what? I, all these testimonies, I wish we could take. Um, can I hear that mo mama's testimony? Can I hear her testimony? Yes, Who is that? Yes. Huh? Ma, sir, this is uh, Miriam Gazama. Miriam Gazama. Miriam Gazama. Are you married? Okay. She has been suffering from photochromic issues. She couldn't view light straight. That's okay. reflection. Read no read under the sun. Okay. But after, as soon as she just prayed, she now received her healing. Come. Now you can see, you can look at the light and see. Right? No, there's something that will break from your life now. As God is healing you, there is a stronghold of the enemy that is breaking. Amen. And at the count of three, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Let that yoke of darkness break from your life. Let her go now. In the name of Jesus. No, these are not things you see with your physical eyes. You can look at people, look cute, look fine, see all kinds of stuff. Amen. Can I just pray for all of you? I wish we could take the testimonies, but it's documented. We can share it online during the week and let the whole world know what God is doing for us. Amen. So all of you lift your hands there. Father, I pray that their testimonies are permanent. Amen. Their healings are perfected. And I declare that from today, their lives are changed in Jesus' name. Please be on your feet. I want you to... You know, I don't have time. That's why. Okay? Can we do something? I want you to pray in two minutes and ask God for something. Ask God for something. Ask God for something. Overflow, make sure you are praying. Ask God for something. Two minutes. Your desire, your expectation. If you don't have, create one. I want to speak over our lives. Come on, make sure you are praying. Those of you online, make sure you are praying. Raise your voice, raise your voice. You are who you are Yesterday Today and forevermore What you say Is what you do Make sure you are praying Ask God for something You never change You never fail 
You are faithful to the end. Faithful God, I worship you. I worship you. Come on, say, you're too faithful to help me. You are too faithful, say, you're too faithful to disappoint me. Make sure you are praying. You're proving yourself. You're proving yourself. Too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You're too faithful to disappoint me. You are proving yourself. You're proving yourself in my life. And I've come to be your life. You're too faithful to fail me. Come on, one more time. You're too faithful to fail me, yeah. You're too faithful to fail me. You're too faithful to disappoint me, yeah. You're too faithful to disappoint me. Yeah, you're proving yourself. Proving yourself in my life. And I've come to realize you're too faithful to fail me. You carry me when some carry their God. Okay, let's sing together. You feed me when some feed their God. Prophesy. You fight for me when some fight for their God. Oh, Jesus. Come on, one more time. You carry me when, when some carry you. Say you feed me when, when some feed you. You fight for me, Lord. For me. Yeah. When some fight for you. Jesus, say. Life giver, life change. And the strings, life giver, life changer. Life changer. You are saying what is about to do for you against that death situation, against that evil report. Life giver shall be now.
I begin to speak over your lives, God is asking me to prophesy. There are two people in overflow, at the overflow. The hand of God will come upon you mightily. You will not be able to stand. When it happens, bring them. I want to prophesy on them. You will not believe the prophecy I'm about to make. Father, let your hand find those two people right now at the overflow. Mighty hand of God rest upon them. It's a new season for you. Bring them. I want to prophesy to them. Na na na. Na na na. na. When you get those two people at the overflow, bring them for me. The rest of us, please lift your hands. Yes, that's, that's, that's the power of God. Please try, just bring them. A lot is happening at the overflow. Just bring them. There are two. I want to prophesy. And God said I should prophesy over them. An overflow anointing is resting upon your life. Bring that one. Let me touch her. New season. Overflow. In Jesus' name. Lift your hands. If you have never believed a prophetic word, believe this one. Bet your life on it. In fact, the Lord is telling me some of you from tomorrow morning, you will begin to harvest the testimonies. The Bible says, in a moment, in the twinkle of an eye, God is a God of speed. He says, I'm watching over my word hastily to perform it. All I want you to do is agree with me by the loud shout of Amen. When I say in Jesus' name, you say amen. In the name of Jesus. Yeah. Whatever God has not planted in your life or in your body, oh my God, I see the hand of God coming on some people. Any evil deposit in your life or in your body by the power of darkness, whether through a dream of the night or however it found its way to your body, in the name of Jesus, I command it to be uprooted now. 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 Everyone that is under any demonic yoke, I stand by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic. And in the name of Jesus, I speak over anyone, whether in this hall overflow or you are hearing my voice in the spirit, in the street. I arrest every demonic spirit right now. Yeah. And under the sound of my voice, I command you to leave God's people now. I break every demonic chain. I command the chains be broken now. Be broken now. Be broken. Help them. Be broken. Be broken. Be broken. Come out of their lives. Come out of their families. Come out of their lives. In the name of Jesus. Just help them. Anyone that has been walking under a dark cloud, the shadow of darkness that has been following you, in the name of Jesus, I command that dark cloud to be lifted from your life. I command those spirits, you know my voice, come out and leave them now. Come out and leave them now. Come out and leave them now. In the name of Jesus, I prophesy speed over your life. What it would have taken God six months to accomplish in your life, let it happen in six weeks. 
What it will have taken God six weeks to accomplish, let it happen in six days. In the name of Jesus. I declare, let doors be opened over your life. Doors of favor, doors of prosperity, doors of promotion, doors of upliftment, doors in your career, doors in your businesses, doors in ministry, doors in your spiritual life. I command those doors, Ephata, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, anyone trusting you for the fruit of the womb, lift your hands. I see an angel of the Lord walking in this hall right now. And that angel is the one that is releasing the fruit of the womb. Whether you are standing for somebody or for yourself, you are believing God for a child. Father, by the ministry of that angel, in the name of Jesus, I declare a release right now. From this point, let the yoke of barrenness be broken. Nine months on the dot, let your babies be in your hands. In the name of Jesus. I pray for your finances. And I declare, let your finances grow faster than the weeds grow in the, in the field. <laughs> you didn't hear what I said. Oh, shh. Wait, you didn't hear what I said. You didn't understand what I said. I declare in the name of Jesus, I speak life to your finances. And I command your finances to grow faster than the grass. I command your finances to grow faster than grasses. I release an open door of abundance over your life. In the name of Jesus, help us. Father, any family that has been under any form of limitation, stagnation, delay, retrogression, they have been crying, believing you, trusting you that the altars will be broken. Lift your hands. In the name of Jesus, I declare, as I count to seven, let every altar of darkness that has caged families be broken right now. I stand by the grace of God upon my life, upon this commission, and in the name of Jesus, I challenge those altars right now. At the count of seven, I command them to be broken. Let families be released. Let the destinies of your loved ones be released. In the name of Jesus. One, two, three, four, five, six. Break, break, break. Catch fire now. Catch fire. Help them. Catch fire. Let them go. Let them go. Let them go. And now seven. Go. Go. In the name of Jesus. I declare over your life whatever you have been trusting God for. Today, let there be a release of angelic intervention. And I release your answers your way. In the name of Jesus. And finally, I want to pray for your spiritual lives. Anyone that has been experiencing, my God, I see the fire of God descending now. Anyone that has been experiencing spiritual dryness, or you are hungry, desperate for a touch of the Spirit. Father, I stretch my right hand all across this hall at the overflow and online. He sent down fire. And it burned in my bones. Father, let fire fall upon them. Let fire come upon dead altars. Let there be a rain of your fire now. Let dead altars be revived. 
Let lean spirits be revived. Let a fire come from the throne room upon your life. And I declare, never be the same today. Never be the same today. I speak to your prayer life. That demon that has been fighting your prayer life. I command the fire of God to torment that spirit right now. And I declare, let grace be multiplied over your prayer life. From today, pray like you have never prayed before. And I declare to you in this season, as God is blessing you, may a grace for passion that leads you into intimacy and communion with the Holy Spirit, let it come upon your life right now. Lift your hands. I see it coming upon a few people. Let that grace for intimacy with the Holy Spirit. May you love the Lord, walk with the Lord, know His voice, see His form. May He appear to you. Help them. I release you into seasons of spiritual encounters. Encounters with angels. Encounters with the Lord Himself. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Help them. Take that grace now. Come and take your place, O oh Lord, in my life. Come and take your place in my life. Come and take your place. Let me just do this at once. Please lift your hands, close your eyes. There are three sets of people God wants to anoint. And after that, I'll make the altar call. If you are here, you are not born again. You can't see all these things and then go back the same. It's time for you to make your ways right with the Lord. So begin to prepare your hearts. I'm going to call you forth shortly to rededicate your life or to get born again and receive Jesus into your life anew. There are three sets of people I want to pray and the hand of God will come upon them massively. There are seven people I see the Lord anointing, but I see him anointing them with fire on their hands. I don't know, but God is about to step you into another level where the gift of God in your life is about to come alive like never before. Then there are 14 sets of people. God is releasing to you a fresh baptism of the spirit. You will begin to speak in tongues, but listen. It's not just about the baptism of the Spirit. It's a wave of His glory that is releasing over your life in this season. 14 of you. And the sign is that you, your mouth, your tongue will begin to vibrate. You speak in tongues. And then there are four people, I see the prophetic anointing coming heavily upon them. My Father, I stand and I ask you today, as I stretch my hands all over this hall and at the overflow and online those seven people let your hand come upon them right now right now right now right now 14 of them i declare a fresh baptism just help them fresh baptism of glory fresh baptism of glory from the front way to the back and outside I see the Lord still touching people oh God oh God in my life come and take your place Baba Masopra Bila Bupriya in my life. Now, God is about to anoint those four people. Four of you, a heavy prophetic anointing is coming on your life at the count of four. Now, this is the sign. They will begin to shout and prophesy. 
when you get them just bring them when i count to four bring them looks like one is at the overflow one or two i don't know but there are four of them and in the name of jesus father by the count of four anoint those four prophets strange prophetic mantle you will prophesy one two three help them help help that young man bring them and now four that's it strange prophetic grace step into another level eyes that see ears that hear may your sensitivity be heightened in the spirit heightened in the spirit Horaba simbo melaba Bella Busa Bubia. Hey, in my God. All of you here, lift your hands, all of you. Your play. My. Just the strings and the same back. Now, all of you, I want you to look at my hand. Listen. All of you here, I don't know. It's just a few people God wants to touch. It's not everybody. It may not be you. It's just a few people. But listen, I want you to just look at my hand. I'm going to wave it past all of you. Just keep looking at the hand. And there's a heavy grace of God that is coming on a few people. Just a few. Get them. I want to just prophesy on them. Lift your hands. Father, let it happen in the name of Jesus. Like the days of Moses. And it rested on the 70 elders. Let it rest. Father, as my hand is moving, let your cloud move. Find those ones that you want to anoint. Find those ones that you want to anoint. Just keep looking at the hand. Keep looking at it. Keep looking. Keep looking. Keep looking. And in his hands were the rays of light. And there lies the power. Adiza, lift your hands. There's a grace, yeah. There's a grace that will come upon you. Look at me. Look at me before I pray for you. See, God is about to give you the strength of an ox and the speed of an eagle. Your spiritual life will never be the same. Father, I stretch my hands towards her. Let that grace fall upon her right now the strength of an ox the speed of an eagle never be the same in the name of jesus in my life come and take your place in my What do we do with this one? Man? Now before we close, if you know you are here, you are not born again, I don't have to beg you. It's time to say yes to the Lord. You are under the sound of my voice. You know your ways are not right with the Lord. You don't know him as Lord over your life. Amen. Amen. Okay, wait, wait. Let me pray for these ones. Just bring them one by one. Let me touch them. Just bring them one by one. 
Let me just touch them. If I touch them, you can take them wherever you want to take them to. Grace in the name of Jesus, one by one, quickly. Quickly. In the name of Jesus, grace. Quickly, 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 quickly. In my life, come and take grace in the name of Jesus. Come and take. I'll just walk around your place. Oh Lord. That resistance is broken. That resistance is broken. Your place increase in my just take it. I don't know. I don't care whatever you take them to the back, they'll sit wherever. Your place in the name of Jesus. Jesus. If you know you are here, you are not born again, or you want to rededicate your life, wherever you are, walk to the front right now. Very quickly. Just walk to the front very quickly. You are here. You say, Pastor, I've seen everything that has happened. I bless God, but my ways are not just right with the Lord. I don't know Him yet as Lord. Or maybe you are one step in God today, and then the next day you are out. You have been struggling, you are in today, you are out tomorrow, fighting a lot of things, and you want God to change everything. I want you to walk to the front. I'm going to pray with you, and that will be all for the night. Wherever you are, let's just take this moment. Please, if you are not under the anointing, stand. You need to give your life to the Lord Jesus. Jesus died and rose again for our salvation. It is important that all men are saved. The Bible says God is not willing that men should be perished. People come to church, enjoy signs and wonders, but they don't know the God of the signs and the wonders. They don't know him as their Lord. It's time for you to make him the Lord of your life. Wherever you are, I want you to walk to the front very quickly in, in the next 10 seconds, and I'll pray for you. If they are coming, please celebrate them. I give you just 10 seconds. Whether you are hearing me at the overflow or in the main hall, it's time to return to the Lord. It's time for a fresh start with Him. Perhaps you were once born again, but you don't know where you are with the Lord and you need to rededicate your life. Make sure you walk to the front. Let's pray for you. Don't be ashamed. It's time to return to the Lord. He says, return to me. He says, return to me, O house of Israel. Draw near to the Lord and he will draw near to you. Come on, keep celebrating them till they come. In my life, come and take your place. In my I'm still waiting. Ten more seconds. If you are listening to me now and your spirit is disturbing you, join them. Your place, oh Lord, come and take your place, oh Lord, in my life, come and take your place, in my life, come and take now, those of you in front, if you are in the congregation, stretch your hands towards them. Pray for them. Those of you in front, please step forward a bit. Today your life is about to change. God is giving you a fresh start with him. All things are about to become new for you. It's a new day for you. Say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you. I acknowledge you that you died for my sins. And rose again for my justification. And today, I denounce sin. I receive eternal life. 
and I declare that you are my Lord and personal Savior in Jesus' name. Father, I pray for these ones. Unashamedly, let your name be named upon them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, I declare that from today, their lives make a new U-turn and a new beginning comes for them. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke the power of sin. I declare that the power of sin is broken over their lives. I declare that grace is released upon them to serve you and to know you in spirit and in truth all the days of their lives. Forward ever, backward never. In Jesus' name, and we pray.